All right, section three starts off with our discussion on ceramics. So our next material is ceramics. Uh, you can think of uh, ceramics in this chapter are going to be paired with glass. You can think of a bull in a china shop kind of saying. I know it's kind of a lie because a bull's not going to just run into everything just because, well, that hurts a bull if he runs into everything. But you can think of properties of ceramics on what you people might think would happen if a bull goes in a china shop. Um, ceramics, your property is going to be hard. You're going to be crystalline. Uh, if you remember back when we talked about solids, you had amorphous solids and crystalline solids. Ceramics are going to be crystalline. They're going to have that crystal structure to them. And you're going to get them by heating clay. Uh, so just to talk about clay, clay is mostly water. Um, so when I do heat it, I am going to evaporate out that water. And then there are small traces of silicon, aluminum, and oxygen in it. And when I heat it up, it gets strong. If I don't heat it up hard enough, it becomes brittle and doesn't quite work as a ceramic. Um, so what you want to do when we make them, we are going to heat them up extremely high. Um, heat is going, depending on what kind of clay you're using, uh, your heat is going to be upwards towards a thousand degrees Celsius and in doing so we're going to evaporate the water out of it because again clay is mostly water. Uh, once that happens our particles are going to stick together. Uh, you can think of bricks as a ceramic. It's been around for quite some time. We use a lot of bricks for a lot of different um, building structures and stuff but you can look if you ever look at a brick you can see that it is very porous there's a lot of little uh, imperfections in it. You can think of those as the little places where the bubbles of water had to evaporate out of. Um, to make up for those little imperfections, we do tend to glaze things over. Um, glaze is silicon dioxide and other chemicals to give it uh, different looks and uh, textures and things like that. But uh, after you do fire up all your ceramics for the first time, you're going to heat it up again with a coat of the silicon dioxide around it. And it's going to form a glassy waterproof covering. Uh, therefore, my ceramics can actually hold water and preserve things quite well. Um, properties serve ceramics. The biggest thing is, is that resistance to moisture. Uh, if you want to store food or something, ceramics is a great way of doing so because the moisture is not going to get in or out of that food. It's going to stay in there. Another great property is that they are insulators. So they will not conduct electricity or even um, heat in a lot of times. Uh, so we can use them for uh, various methods of cooking different things depending on how you want to cook it. A lot of the heat goes into the food instead of uh, the actual pot. Um, which has its ups and downs for when you go to cooking. So you don't always cook in ceramic dishware. Um, but they are going to be withstanding high temperatures. So if you do need to cook something up or even melt your metals, ceramics are a great place to do so because they can withstand those, those high temperatures. A downfall is they do break easily um, depending on different uh, ways you interact with them. If you drop a ceramic pot, there's a good chance that it's going to crack and break. Um, uses for ceramics, they have plenty of uses. Again, we like to use the properties that they have. So insulators, we do not conduct electricity. So I use ceramics as insulators. Uh, because they uh, protect from moisture, I can store food in them. Uh, not only will it uh, seal off the water and stuff from getting out, uh, they do uh, protect from animals, so the scent doesn't always get out of the pot as well. Uh, again, the resistance to moisture, you can see them being used in roofing tiles. Uh, so when it rains, they don't soak up the water. It just kind of slides off. And also with sewer piping, again, you have these giant ceramic uh, sewer pipes that carry uh, water because they resist the water, doesn't soak up the water, just transports them out. So you see that a lot in your uh, sewers. Um, other uses for ceramics that you might not think about, uh, they are found in your catalytic converters on cars, which are devices built into your car to uh, help protect uh, the environment. So they do uh, filter out hydrocarbons and make your car less of a pollutant than it actually is um, if you didn't have it. 
they're worth a lot of money because they have a little piece of uh, pol polonium in them, uh, which is not polonium, titanium in them, uh, which is pretty uh, expensive, and therefore a lot of people tend to seal them off cars and sell them for that. Uh, another use is your uh, ceramic uh, hips and um, knees and different bio ceramics. Uh, basically, if you need to get a hip replacement or something, we do make uh, hips out of ceramics because they resist that moisture and they're not going to expand or contract uh, in different temperatures like other materials would.